Hey everyone, Liam here. Welcome to part four in the Line of the Bat series. So today we are going to be working on the fabric, namely the blue and the red, as you can see it rotating on screen. Now, there is still a lot of cleaning up to do on this model. There's still a lot of parts that look very rough. That's something that I'll do at the end, but you're getting an idea for the process as it is. It's also worth noting that the fabric, you can clearly see has a really nice, tra nice transition. It's not done to a competition standard, it's gone to a really nice centerpiece standard, but I'm going to explain to you also how to push this further to get that ultra smooth perfect blend as we go, but I'm not going to show you it on the video because it would be a really long video and probably quite boring. But if this is helpful, please like and subscribe, it's a really big deal. If you want to support the channel, you can support me through Patreon or more importantly, I offer tuition through Patreon and you can also get in contact with me through my Instagram, Facebook for any centerpiece commissions you might be interested in. So thanks very much, I hope it's helpful and feel free to leave me some feedback in the comments. Right, so first up on the wet palette we have Scale 75 Deep Red, Vallejo Bloody Red in the bottom and Vallejo Model Color Black. So we're starting with the Scale 75 Deep Red. Now this has been thinned down to probably one part water to one part paint, but even then it's not it's not really that watery it's quite thick we're gonna mix all this paint on the model we're gonna do that when the paint is wet because I want this to be quite quick to start with so I'm laying down the red I'm gonna start on the lion's chest piece I'm doing it with his arms in place because his arms are gonna cover some of this fabric anyway so I want behind the arms to be darker so just while his arms are there I'm painting the red in and then I, I, I know where not to paint and then I'll pull the, well, I've pulled the head off and I'm going to pull the arm off in a second as well. Because most of what is under his arm, I want in shadow anyway. So that's all going to be really dark, mostly black. You can see I'm not really being very careful. This is it's, it's supposed to be a fun model to paint. I'm not trying to be really serious about it. The paint is thin enough so it doesn't obscure the model, but it's also thick enough so I don't have to do loads of coats. I'm just looking for a flat opaque finish on it, that's it for the time being. I'm also going to catch that edge on the inside of that cloak there, because that's still facing upwards, and if I just leave all of the recess in black, then it's just going to look unpainted. So it's better to put some red in there and then I can always tone it down later. So with the bottom tabard, maybe, whatever it's called, that bottom piece of fabric, there is loads of sculpted on details. I'm not worried about the sculpted details. I'm just painting over them for the time being because if your paint's thin enough, you're not going to obscure the details. But the thing with this piece of fabric is it's got some really prominent folds. Um, don't, why, don't do what I just did and paint over what you've already painted. But yeah, it's got some really prominent folds, and the problem is some of those folds is an absolute nightmare to get your brush in, and the other ones are just really like quite strong curves. So for me, it makes sense just to leave those folds inwards where you can hardly get your brush, just leave them black. No one's really going to see them, especially as a as a, as a gaming piece. So all I've done, I just I've I've just done the red on the highest point of those folds. So I'm just going to jump across to the cape here as well. Now this cape kind of flows sideways. So all I'm going to do, there's going to be a lot of black on this cape. So all I'm doing at first is I'm painting on a fairly solid colour of this deep red, scale 75, and then next to it I'm painting the black. And then I'm rubbing off the majority of the paint on my brush. And then I'm going to mix the two together. So both of these colours are wet. So when I say I'm rubbing off the majority of the paint, I'm never actually cleaning my brush. What I'm doing is when I put the red down, I'll keep the red on the brush. Then I'll get the black and I'll put the black on the brush. Uh, sorry, I'll put the black on the model. So in my brush, I have both the black and the red. And then when I come to mix those two colors on the actual model, I rub my brush on my thumb. That mixes that black and red that's in your thumb and it gives you a mid-tone. And then as you can see, more of this will be on camera, I'm sorry for my bad recording, but it will be better. But where the red and the black meets, you can see I'm running my brush along 
the join of the two colors and then that will mix them together. If you've seen the brass scorpion video for the bronze trim, then you would have seen this technique already. It's exactly the same thing. It's just different colors and on a different surface. So you can see I'm putting down the black where my hand is going mental in the corner there. That's me rubbing it on my finger. So I now have that mid tone because I've mixed the paints in my brush. And then I'm mixing the black and red on the model and you can see I get a rough transition. Now it's worth noting if you really get this technique down or in my case, uh, if you are more careful, then you can actually get some really nice blends and transitions using this technique and then what you do is you just refine it afterwards. So this is a very quick way of getting a transition from one color to another. I personally normally use it on much smaller surfaces because it's easier. You have less brush marks to control but it also works on stuff like this as you can see. So I'll try and explain it again just a little bit clearer. So your paint consistency, your paint cannot be too thin when you put your paint on the model it cannot run or move it needs to be quite solid because that will make it easier to mix if it's too thin it will just mix like water and it will puddle and it won't work if it's too thick you're going to have physical blobs of paint so the consistency is key here not too thin because it won't mix properly not too thick because it will leave physical marks you're not washing your brush you put down one color so in this case I put down the red and then I will put down the second color next to it in this case the black and then I'm using the side of my brush without having washed those colors off I'm using the side of my brush to mix those colors together now the larger surface area that you have to blend the larger your brush stroke so you can see when I'm doing it on this my brush is generally moving from the top of the cloak all the way down to the bottom it's one huge brush stroke because every brush stroke you leave every brush stroke you use will be a mark on that model and naturally you want as little marks as possible you see this is the black going down and then I mix it on my finger so the red and black mix in the paintbrush and then there's those long brush strokes and it's just blending those two colors together now it's not perfect because I'm working quite quickly but you can get a really nice transition but we're also going to make it better with some more steps afterwards so next up we're going to go to the Valero bloody red now you can see what we have on screen We've got a fairly soft transition with the deep red to the black but it is looking very flat so we either need to make it darker which we can't really do because we're already at black so we have to make it brighter to add some contrast of light and shadow so we've got the Vallejo Bloody Red. This is thinned down to probably two parts water, one part paint. Ideally, I actually would have liked to have used a thicker paint, but the problem is this patterning trim, I'm not sure what it is, that, that pattern along the side of the cloak, the reality is, is the, the cast isn't terrific, the details aren't very great, and I was a bit paranoid about losing any more of that detail in the sculpt. So the paint's a bit thinner than I actually wanted, but you can clearly see what I'm doing with the blood red is I'm going over the deep red, but I'm not going over all of it. Now, this, this bloody red is not actually a very strong paint. So as it dries, it's going to get darker by quite a bit, and you're going to see it as I paint, as the paint dries. Although when you put the paint down and it's wet, it's quite vibrant, nearly all of that disappears. So you just need to be aware of how your paints behave and that's why you'll find a lot of more experienced painters have very similar paints in a lot of those recipes. There's a lot of paints that a lot of people use. You can see here as I'm drying it, that vibrancy has just completely disappeared. So where previously what we were doing was mixing our red and black on the model. That's obviously not what we're doing here. We are adding thin layers of red paint to the deep red to build up a highlight so we're never going to go into the black in this case unless we don't like the position of the black the red is always going to be the blood red is always going to be in the deep red sections and it's going to be a build up of several layers 
to get a more vibrant finish, to get a brighter highlight. In regards to paint consistency, the paint consistency you use is going to affect the sort of result that you're getting. So if you go for a much thinner paint, let's say for example you did it with three or four parts water, one part paint, what it's going to mean is that your the paint that's going to go down is far less opaque, you're going to have to build up more layers and there's nothing wrong with that you you could effectively paint with glazes where the paint is say eight parts water one part paint and just build it up really slowly a lot of people like painting like that there's nothing wrong with it it's whatever works for you for me i prefer to go with a thicker paint at first to speed up the transition and then to bring it together later because it's less work now it's, it's also comes down to the finish you want if this was going to be a competition piece i would probably be far more careful with it and build up those layers far slower i would also probably paint it differently because i want some texture in the cloak but i'm not going for that here so i've just gone back to the lion himself those top sections of the fabric i'm doing exactly the same as i did on the cloak but the difference here is on some of it i'm just catching the edges because we've got folds in this cloak so we still want some shadow in the recess so i'm just using that blood red and i'm picking out either that top section on my shoulder there that's going to be mostly red or i'm picking out the edges of the folds themselves just to give it a bit more definition So I'm just going to jump across that Vallejo model color black and I've added a fair bit of water to this. This is probably six or seven parts water to one part black. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in and redefine the shadows a little bit. I'm using it to glaze over the red recesses. So I'm using it a bit like a wash. So a wash is just a just paint with lots of water. Just to give me some of the shape back on the details that I've gone over, especially on the fabric uh, around his legs. And I'm also going to use it to glaze back. And by what I, what I mean by that is I'm using a really thin paint to alter the tone of a color. So you can see that red has darkened up quite a lot there. And I'm going to use it to smooth out any marks, especially in the shadows. So you can see me doing it here. Now, I say this a lot, I can get quite lazy. And in this regards, I have get a bigger brush every brush mark every brush stroke you use on a model leaves a mark regardless of how thin your paint is so get a bigger brush use less brush strokes if you can so nice big fluid marks like that one on screen with the red I've done I did one large stroke across the red so it leaves less marks so what I'm doing here is I'm now I'm jumping between the black and the reds that I've used and I'm going over everything that I've done and I'm trying to make the marks from the wet blending disappear. Now depending on how careful you've been and depending on how well you can wet blend this will take as many layers as it needs to be. So I've been quite lazy with this so it's, it's taken me quite a few it takes me quite a few layers of paint to get rid of all the marks and you can see what I'm doing I'm just going over it with a really thin paint six or seven parts water one part paint I'm going over all of the red sections with reds or I'm going over all the black or dark red sections with the black and it's tinting the colors that I'm using and it's getting rid of the marks so if I use a black to go over the red it's going to turn the blacks red sorry if I use a black to go over the reds it's going to turn the reds black or a darker red and if I use a red to go over the blacks, it's going to make the black lighter and turn it more red. So just be a bit picky about what colors you're using and what parts you're putting it on. Because if you put the black, for example, over the bloody red, it's going to have quite an impact and it's going to alter what that red's going to look like. So I'm going to fast forward this because there's not really much to see, but I want you to see the process 
at the very least. Right, so you can see the result. We've got a nice soft transition. I have just painted black over that pattern on the edge of the cloak, but you can see that I've got a nice soft transition. Now, if you want a nicer transition, the reality is, is you need to keep, keep doing those glazes over that cloak and keep adjusting it. Eventually, all of the marks will disappear and you'll have a really smooth, stunning transition. And if you're going for that result, and if you're going for a competition piece and you don't want any flaws in it, that's what you have to do. You have to invest the time, but you don't need to go that crazy if you don't want to. With the front of the cloak, I've just going back to this Vallejo Bloody Red and I'm picking out the brightest points for the highlights just to make it pop around his face, collar, shoulder area. Because remember, that's going to be, I want that to be brighter than everywhere else on the model by the end of it. Right, so I'm content with the red because I don't want to go too bright with it, remember, because we're also going to have curves on this base. So when you look at Conrad curves, you're also going to see the back of the lion. So if the cloak is really vibrant or has a huge amount of contrast, it's going to take away from the jewel in itself and it's going to take away from curves. And I don't want that. So what we're going to do here is we're going to work on the inside of the cloak. Now I'm going to be using firstly Vallejo IDF blue quite like this blue it's another one of these paints that I, I use quite a lot it's a very desaturated gray type of blue and I'm painting the inside of the cloak this is probably going to be the dark darkest actual color I'm going to use other than black because the inside of this cloak needs to be quite dark because the whole thing is going to be in shadow now if you're doing this as a competition piece you need to make sure that you paint the inside of the cloak. Even if the inside of the cloak is going to be pitch black, you still need to have highlights and shadows. You just won't have it very dark or very light. There's not going to be much range there. But in this case, what we're doing is I'm using the Vallejo IDF blue and I'm using black. And I'm just mixing the two exactly the same as we did with the red. Now, the only thing is, is on the right hand side of this cloak where I'm painting right now, this is going to be the brightest part of this cloak because all the rest of it is the cloak that wraps around him. So it's going to be, I'm going to have that really dark, but this right hand side actually comes up and you see it. So this is quite a bright part. So this, we're going to add some white into it as well, but you can clearly see what I'm doing. You can see it, clearly see the black and the blue here on screen and I'm mixing them together. It's exactly the same process as the red, just different colours.
So next up we are going over the blue that we've just blended, the cloak, blue cloak that we just blended and we are glazing over it with a mix of white and the Vallejo IDF blue. I don't want to go too bright with it but the whole point of this is that that particular fold that gets shown up quite a lot on the model is going to be brighter in that area than just the IDF blue and naturally exactly the same as before as the, the other parts of the fabric it's getting rid of those brush marks from the wet blending and the more brush marks that you have the more glazes you will need to pull it together but it's, it's a really good technique to learn it speeds up your painting especially if you're just looking at army painting or doing your characters you can get some really nice results and you can get them really quickly if you want to know why my the model keeps going off screen here it's because I've got the hairdryer sat on my lap and every time I put paint down I'm drying it with a hairdryer and you can just see how it's getting brighter gradually and that there's not really any marks there as I said I've already said it previously but I'll say it again if you want if you were doing this as a competition piece and you need that ultra smooth blend you would just keep glazing over until all of the marks have disappeared that's how you get a really smooth blend whether it's a cloak or whether it's armor regardless this is the best way of doing it with a brush if you've got an airbrush you can also do this stage with the airbrush just thin paint down so it's six or seven parts water be very careful with it and just keep building up layers it will do exactly the same thing but as I've said before there's not going to be any airbrushing on this channel because although I do it quite a lot it's not a process that I enjoy especially when it comes to my own pieces and that's it what you see on camera is now what we've been doing so I hope it was helpful there are other ways of doing these cloaks but I think it's important to note that this jewel is a nice display piece but I'm not looking for perfection I'm not looking for a perfect finish I just want it to look really nice I don't want it to take a huge amount of time because otherwise this video series would be ridiculously long as well so next up what we are going to do we're probably going to do a video on his face and then I'm probably going to do a video on his sword and then I'm going to move on to Conrad Kerr's I don't think I'm going to do any freehand on this video series because I don't want that cape to be too complicated um, oh and I'll I'll do a video on the fur as well so you see how I do that but that's really quick so I'll probably do that as part of the face so two more videos on the lion and then we're going to move on to Kurz and then the base so I hope the video was helpful I hope you enjoyed it if you did like and subscribe if you want to share the video that would be amazing because obviously I'm trying to get the channel out there still got a long way to go so thanks very much cheers <laughs>